Uh, James, I will read to you. If we've played worse in a half this season, I'm struggling to remember it. Fulham deserved their lead. And then, not long after, worst two halves of the season, probably Fulham thoroughly deserving winners. Yeah, that's from me. Sofa score says that you had an XG that was nearly as much as theirs. 2.76 ah, versus 2.41, James. You had 14 shots, four big chances, all missed. So it could easily have oh, yeah. gone differently I mean, even based on a goal at, or two going in. Though, at nil-nil, Madison has a reverse shot that goes narrowly wide at a near post. Madison then sets up Sonny for one on the angle, which you'd fancy him for, and he ends up putting it over. Those are both at nil-nil, right? And if one of them goes in, we're potentially talking about a different result. But ignore all that, right? Fulham had other chances as well, mate. Yeah, of course. So, yeah, should we have probably scored in the game? Yeah, sure. But uh, I I guess it was probably a little bit inevitable that when we eventually did fail to score in a game, there was probably going to be one where we missed some glaring chances. But don't let the stats fool you that Fulham were thoroughly deserving winners. They were excellent. Really, really good. Palinia back in the team? Yes, um, which I think is possible a consequence of not winning at Wolves last week. And we spoke Mm. last week about the amount of efforts they even had at Wolves in defeat. And if you look at their home record this year... I've lost four home games, Fulham. Brentford really early in the season, which had a little bit of a consequence for a red card. They lost to Chelsea quite early in the season. They lost to Manchester United in the last minute in a, a quite a, a drab game. And lost at home to Burnley very randomly in December. But this home record also includes now obviously beating my team 3-0 after beating Brighton 3-0 in their we last home game. This season, James. Yep. You lost their 5-0. Yeah, there Forest sure lost their 5-0. Their Arsenal lost there. Um, in terms of home record, they've actually got the <laughs> eighth best home record in the league. And were it not for the fact that their away record um, is 0.71 points per game, we'd be talking about them challenging for Europe here. Yeah. yeah, I mean... The, City and Liverpool still got to go there. They're six points behind us, which is seventh. They're right, and it's quite compressed there between kind of sixth, seventh, and all the way down to 12th. I was looking, I was like, well, my thoughts around Fulham are really... You've clearly got a squad that has found a system that works. The manager knows what he wants from his players and but team. They've, they've changed you. it the last four games. So how do they? What 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 do they do now? Like because they want to go and challenge the pretenders if it's the West Ham's of the world and Newcastle and Brighton and what have you. Um, their results and their their performances are showing that they have the ability now to step up. I mean, what your seventh, Serge? Yeah, yeah. Is that, is that right? Yeah. Eighth is probably going to be enough for Europe. Yep. They're six points behind you. Yeah. They're, like, they're now at the bottom of that group. That's what we're I'm saying. Pu- we're putting them in the group with Chelsea, Newcastle, yourselves, Wolves, Brighton, rather than putting them in the group now with Bournemouth and Crystal Palace. 100%. Yeah. And they're probably one of the first teams that we thought would be on the beach as well. And they're just yeah. And not. if you look at the games left, as I said, Liverpool and Manchester City have still got to go to Craven Cottage. But the rest of the fixtures are all winnable. Two away games coming up, Sheffield United and Nottingham Forest, Newcastle at home, trip to West Ham, Palace at home, Brentford away, Luton away. And yet, we're all going to do exactly what we've done in the build-up to game with 29. Overlook them. And for those, yep. that's not everyone. Obviously, there'll be people on Leno's, perhaps a few on Anthony Robinson, who my wife is, uh, for those who watch the deadline stream, my wife is really unhappy with the spelling of his first name, but not quite as unhappy as she was benching him on her free hip. Oh. She decided she didn't like his first name, so put him third sub. Is what it is. Um, and obviously, well, Mrs. L will be on the show. This <laughs> she will be on Patreon, Patreon anyway. Week. So, if there's um, ever anything that's worth signing up your, your money to our Patreon, it's when Mrs. L comes yeah, on the show. She'll be the end of me one day. Um, Muniz owners are obviously delighted. That's the big winner this week. Anybody who had Muniz has won. I, I don't know anybody would have had Muniz this week and got a red arrow. Surely that's impossible. Yeah. And he does continue to offer great value. Uh, his price, he's 4.6 still. His form is such that surely he just stays in this team at the moment. It's worth saying, obviously, he's obviously got crunched on the third goal and gone off not long afterwards. So, as a case to say, maybe he should be flagged at this minute. But um, Marcus Silva stressed that he'd probably be okay. Brea wasn't in the squad at all. Jimenez has just come back. I don't see why that would change. Like, if you've got Muniz 
And you're now going into game week 30 and looking at Sheffield United away. He's starting for you, isn't he? Yep. You're not leaving that out at the moment. You'd, you'd, you'd find a way to leave someone else out, I think. So he obviously, I think, also offers a really interesting one, perhaps for those who have used the bench boost and are looking at a wild card now, where you can go in as your eighth attacker and you can pick and choose when to play him. Get their game week 37 fixture, by the way, is Manchester City at home. So it is, for those who want a bench boost, it is, well, I, I don't want to look at that because your mate, the flyer, mate, unbelievable. How is he still going? He, he's skits. He is. <laughs> and he keeps putting me off. Um, he, I mean, this is definitely one that people can look at, but you wouldn't want to look at that on bench boost. So I think Fulham are the sort of team, a little bit like Brentford, where if you've used your bench boost, someone like me, maybe they offer an opportunity where we should look at them, whereas those who are aiming for a bench boost will probably overlook them. And obviously, following Liverpool's um, defeat yesterday, they obviously can't double now as well. But there's a few there. I, what always impresses me with Fulham when I enjoy watching them is I think the fullbacks, when they play well, are outstanding. I've spoken about Robinson a lot in seriousness, that... Sometimes I watch him and I think, you have the potential to be a real top-level player. And then the next time I always watch him, I think, no, I've got that wrong. He was outstanding. And Timothy Castagna at right back was really good. The two centre-backs and the goalkeeper were really solid. They are better for having Paulinho back in the team. There's no doubt about that. And I think the selection of William over Harry Wilson was... This didn't dawn to me till someone asked about Harry Wilson on my deadline stream, actually. And I talked myself into thinking that William might play. And I said, what you've got to think is with the wide players against Tottenham, there's so much off-the-ball work you have to do. A more experienced player like William will be more useful for Fulham rather sure. than Harry Wilson, who's a really good technical player, but William's got far more experience, hasn't he? He played really well. Alex Awobi, you always know you're going to get 100% commitment off. And one that people certainly would have overlooked nearly exclusively in game with 29 and might not be a terrible one, again, for those who perhaps um, aren't bench boosting late in the season, Andreas Pereira is playing much further forward now, much more like last season when so many of us owned him for long periods. But you wouldn't pick that over Muniz no. at the moment. And I think, again, those who are wildcarding must surely look at it We've over, we completely overlooked them heading for this blank because on paper they had the toughest fixture in the blank. And yet, over the last four games, they've beat Manchester United, Brighton and Tottenham and deserve to beat all three of them. Crazy. For my team, yeah, probably... It's probably pound for pound the worst performance of, of the season. I think of some others that have been bad like Wolves away, but there was more mitigating with that with absent players, you know, straight off the back of that farcical game with Chelsea. There's no excuses on that at the weekend. I'm not going to have, oh, Mickey van der Ven didn't play. You know, that shouldn't be an excuse. Dragashim wasn't the main problem. But one interesting thing is when you look back on the first goal, he's desperate to hold the high line, Dragashim. So he ends up a little bit deeper than Christian Romero. He plays to the left of Romero and he's obviously picking up Muniz. And he's desperate to hold the, the line high which I don't know is normal for him. I, you know, I've not watched enough of him at Genoa previously. And you can see he's trying. He's really trying with a consciousness to hold the line. What then happens is, though, he holds it too high. Romero drops off a little bit. And Munez can obviously see the back of Romero's shirt and just gets enough of a yard to be in front. I mean, the finish is, is brilliantly done. And it's, a, it's just a minor error, I think, of like learning. Yep. And it's not happened for a long time. But you might remember at the start of the season, I spoke about this a lot with Tottenham about... There'll be a couple of slappings in there and afterwards we just put our hands up and go, I don't know what happened now. Mm. And I kept using the reference of Crystal Palace away. Now in terms of difficulty level, I don't think Crystal Palace and Fulham away are miles away from each other. Certainly if Probably Palace similar. Certainly yeah. if Palace have got all their play, you know, as a Elise fit and all that sort of thing, which they didn't that night when, yep. when we went to Selhurst Park back in October on that Friday night. And I think this this is it. It's felt it's felt like a long time coming. But this was the sort of defeat that we kind of long predicted all season would happen for Tottenham at some point. It's frustrating because it's come off the back of the outstanding second half performance at Villa last week. And it's that that, that stops you from thinking, well, this is a disaster. I mean, we've lost three league games since we lost at home to you in the start of December when yeah. we began to get players back fit. So it's not like it's a disaster run. Is other teams probably better than us have lost to Fulham this year. In fact, it definitely is in Arsenal's case. Um, just a really, really bad day at the office. 
but it's a little bit conflicting now for the FPL assets heading into 30. So before the weekend, I, would, I was quite bullish about, yeah, Sun against that weakened Luton defence for captaincy in game week 30. Yeah, I'm prepared to take Haaland on. You know, when Haaland's got a home game, even though it's Arsenal, I don't really want to argue unless there's an opportunity there that's good enough. Ask me now where Sun plays against Luton. I'm not sure. Richie's obviously back fit. Presumably, he'll go away on international duty with Brazil. It might be that he comes back in through the middle against Luton and Sonny goes out wide. If Sonny does go out wide, that's not as attractive. If Sonny goes out wide, Brennan Johnson won't be in the team. But who's your alternative captaincy? Just go to Holland. Cole Palmer's another. Home to Burnley. I can see a lot of people captain Cole Palmer at home to Burnley. Why not fucking Munez away to Sheffield United? <laughs> Why not? I mean, it, why not? Yeah, with a, with a form is in. I think uh, looking at it, Carl Palmer versus Burnley or Sonny versus Luton, I'd actually probably say Carl Palmer over uh, against Burnley. I think I'm just the physicality of the game against Luton. It might be one that passes Sonny by sometimes. Yeah, but then the, the one thing about Luton is listen, he can still return from out wide, and particularly against an opponent like that, right? If he plays on that left side, then he plays against Agbene, who's an offensive player who wants to either push on, or he ends up against Kabore and the right sided centre back, and Kabore's concentration is useless. Awful. He has so, made a couple of really bad fouls. So Sonny can still return, and Luton aren't like most teams at the bottom. If you look at the teams, um, if you kind of bracket the the bottom six, and you probably throw Palace into this as well, considering my team played them at home very recently. Luton are the outlier of that bottom seven. You know that they'll, they'll come and play you. Yep. They're not just going to sit in and camp in. That's gone for them, I think. Plus, they're too weak with their individuals defensively just to camp in. If they came in and just camped in, I'd be quite happy with that. Whereas certain ones like Forest in 32, you think, well, that might end up being a bit of a slog if we, if we don't score early, for example. So, yeah, Sonny's still under consideration for captaincy. Brennan Johnson owners, for those who bought, this is why I didn't want to buy him. There was rumours on Friday that Madison hadn't trained. And I wouldn't be surprised if that's correct. And partly, obviously, he went off early. Yep. Now, I think investment in him knew if he were going to do it would have gone. He'll obviously go away with England. If Madison's fit for game week 30, he'll start. There's no question about that. And it's the same for Kulusevski on the right. Um, but I think if you were investing in Tottenham, I think that, that moment's probably gone. been and gone, I think, to be honest. Just a really, really bad day at the office. Let's just try and put it under the carpet, hopefully, um, and give credit to Fulham because they were exceptional. Yeah, they've been decent. 